Well, hello everyone, and welcome, you know, once again to our uh, daily devotional on this hot, steamy day in Hemet. So would you join me in prayer before we begin? Father, we just come before you, Lord, and we call upon your holy name. We ask you, Father, to open up our hearts and our minds and our spirits that we would be willing to hear from you. We pray this, Father, in your most precious name. Amen. Well, my name is Vivian Baker, and as always, it's just a joy to be able to be with you on these days and to share God's Word. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 10. These are Paul's words, as he says, Sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, poor, yet making many rich, having nothing, and yet possessing everything. These are the words of Paul. And you know, we all have, you know, sorrows, times of sorrow and suffering and hardships in our life. It's part of life. Jesus prepared us for that and said that that would happen. And then we add to that the daily bombarding of the evil that surrounds us in today's world like it, like it never has before. And in this verse, Paul, yeah, he's teaching us that there's something within each and every believer that gives us cause to always be rejoicing. And what a gift, what a promise that is that our great God has given to us. In spite of our sorrows, we can still rejoice. Paul and his followers at that time chose to continually rejoice. And it's important for us to take note of that. It was something that they chose to do. You know, even in um, uh, the greatest of their despairs, they chose to rejoice. He, Paul saw in his life uh, the eternal, inter eternal perspective rather than the situation of the problems that he was faced with. So therefore, this enabled him to be able to rejoice, as he tells us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I say rejoice. And through this suffering, Paul uh, brought um, spiritual wealth to others. In other words, he didn't allow his suffering to hold him back. He didn't allow it uh, to go to waste. He took full advantage of that, and he became an ambassador for Christ. It was as if, towards the lost, as if he was pleading with them, be reconciled to God, just as we're told to do in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. And because of his faith, Paul knew that he could stand on the promise that all things were his in Christ, as we find in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 21 through 23. Paul was able to take all of his sufferings. He was able to turn them into victories, victories that were going to reach far out into eternity. In Acts chapter 16, verses 23 through 25, there we find an account of the suffering that Paul and Silas uh, went through while they were in prison. They were flogged, they were beaten, they, they were neglected in so many different ways. And yet, if we read on in verse 25 of that text, we see that they were praying and singing hymns to God. And while they were doing that, the prisoners and the guards were watching. What a testimony, what a witness, and what an example that they have been for us. So what gave Paul the fortitude and the strength and the courage to continue to press on, even in these most challenging times? Well, he tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 17, when he said, But the Lord stood at my side, and he gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed. Yes, my friends, the joy of the Lord was Paul's strength, and it's our strength as well. You know, his suffering didn't deter him. He didn't allow it to hold him back. No, in turn, 
He made those that he was ministering to, he made them eternally rich with the knowledge of God and with the joy of their salvation of their souls. So I'd like to close um, repeating that the, the verse, the uh, main verse that I was shared with you today from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 10, but this time giving it to you from the New Living Translation, translation where it says, our hearts ache, but we always have joy. We are poor, but we give spiritual riches to others. We own nothing, yet we have everything. And if we just wrap that up and sum that up very briefly, we can say that Paul knew that if he had Christ, he had everything he needed, the strength, the power, the fortitude to endure suffering and also to encourage and strengthen others. So as I was studying in the Psalms a couple of days ago, it occurred to me, it came to, uh, to my understanding that the, psalm, the Psalms speak of loud rejoicing throughout many of the Psalms. And in, in that rejoicing, we see that it's based on the goodness and the greatness of our God. So my friends, let's never uh, neglect to be rejoicing in God, giving Him praise, glory, and honor, no matter what our circumstances are, no matter what is happening in our lives, we give glory to God. Father, we just come before you, Lord, and we thank you. And it just never, ever ceases to amaze me how rich and full the instruction in your word is and how we can live our lives in, in fullness and in joy and rejoicing and bringing that joy and that rejoicing to others, no matter what is happening in our lives. In your most precious name we pray, Father. Amen. Well, goodbye now, my friends, until we meet again.